Hello everybody and welcome to the Thursday edition of Video Clips. Today, it's an unfortunate thing, but 20% of United States high school boys and 11% of all school-age children have been diagnosed with Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. According to the Centers for Disease Control, about 6.4 million children have been diagnosed at some point in time in their lives, and about two-thirds are medicated for the condition. Now, there's a growing awareness that the medications don't work, and there are a lot of articles in the Health Brace Library that document this, so I won't regurgitate all that here. Kids are still getting this diagnosis daily, and medication is almost always strongly recommended. Schools are often complicit in this and have a vested interest in getting a diagnosis because their reimbursements from the government are higher for kids who have special needs. The side effects of the drugs are often not discussed with parents. In fact, that's, that's a major issue in healthcare and one we're trying to address here is the lack of really good information about risks and benefits. Most parents, I am sure, would not medicate their children if they understood the side effects and also if they had data based on the, that showed the limited efficacy of these drugs as well. They have been proven to be completely ineffective for improving a child's long-term academic performance or performance in careers later in life. A new meta-analysis shows that ADHD medications interfere with sleep, and sleep issues have been uh, determined scientifically in good studies to interfere with both focus and cognitive function. So according to the review, the meds increase sleep latency, sleep efficiency, and the duration of sleep. So lack of sleep can cause attention deficit disorder, and kids are given medication for the ADHD, which then causes lack of sleep, which then increases attention deficit disorder. If that made your head hurt, it makes my head hurt too that this stuff actually goes on. Now, just a couple of definitions. Everybody knows what duration of sleep is, but sleep latency is the amount of time it takes to go to sleep once you get your body in the bed. And sleep efficiency is how much time you sleep in bed of the time that you are in bed. The analysis included nine articles and showed that both children and adolescents who take stimulant medications, those are ADHD drugs, take significantly longer to go to sleep. They have significantly worse sleep efficiency and they sleep less than children who don't take the meds. The researchers concluded that taking stimulant medications led to worsening sleep for kids and adolescents and that pediatricians should therefore adjust medication needs to help kids sleep better. Uh, that blows my mind. I'll come back to that in a minute. Worsening sleep can exacerbate attention def, uh, disorders. I mentioned that earlier. So studies show that sleep issues affect attention, focus, and learning. One study showed that just a one hour difference in sleep led to a decline in alertness and emotional regulation. This means that children are given medication because they can't focus, which then leads to worsening sleep, which then leads to a declining ability to focus and, um, and to sit still. This is an important reason why the medications don't work. Like a lot of drugs, they actually make the condition worse that they are supposed to treat. Focus is a skill, and children can be taught to develop, to, uh, to develop it and to choose to use it. Instead of adjusting medication doses, kids who can't focus and pay attention should be shown how to do it and one of the important parts of this is clear consequences to not doing it. Uh, just like there are clear consequences for, or should be, for kids if they don't do their homework and they lie about things. I mean, this is, this is impo it is important to learn how to pay attention and to do things when it's time to do them. Cognitive therapy has been shown to be very, very effective for helping children and adults with ADHD to address their issues without medication. And I'm very, uh, I'm very adamant about this. I think one of the reasons, in addition to the fact that the drugs have side effects and they, and they are, are basically ineffective, I think that there's a lot to be gained by having children learn how to focus and choose to focus rather than having labels that make them feel like there's something wrong with them. They're defective or sick people who need treatment to resolve their issues. So much better to uh, help children with, um, uh, with therapy and, um, and teaching them how to become adults. I mean, that's what parenting children is all about, is teaching kids skills they need for life. And uh, I think back on uh, my own upbringing and, and uh, you know, like all of us, I think there are things that I would, would have wanted to have different. But uh, I do thank my parents for teaching me how to behave and how to, um, and my responsibility in life to get things done and, and, and how to go about doing that. And so I, I think we should get back to a little bit of that. Politically incorrect to say it, but I'm going to say it anyway. It's my platform, right? Okay, so um, on to another topic. 
According to a research group, the dietary data reported by Americans as part of the United States Department of Agriculture's National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey, isn't that a mouthful, is essentially meaningless. And the reason is that there is an enormous disparity between what people say they eat and what they actually eat. The authors write that memory-based dietary information is fundamentally and fatally flawed and should not be used in public policy discussions or in developing dietary guidelines for Americans. Now, these NHANES surveys, as they're known, uh, involve asking people what they ate yesterday. The authors report that in a high percentage of surveys, respondents report that they consume fewer calories than what would be required just to meet calorie needs if they did nothing at all. The data indicate that most people should be losing weight, but the opposite is true. Most people report gaining weight, or, or may at least maintaining their, their current weight, which means that the information that they're providing cannot possibly be correct. Many studies have shown that self-reported data is a problem, particularly with food intake, and lead author Edward Archer has written other articles on this topic. In 2013, he and a group of colleagues reported that during the 39-year history, 39 history of NHANES data, uh, calorie intake for information for 67.3% of women and 58.7% of men was not physiologically plausible. The group reported that obese women typically underreport their calorie intake by up to 865 calories a day, and the combination of all of these things means that the data are virtually meaningless. Archer further notes that this goes just beyond calories. Self-reported data are used to estimate all kinds of other things, like how much calcium, iron, and zinc people are eating every day. And then that information in turn gets uh, processed into public policy. It's why we fortify foods. It's why we encourage supplementation. And of course, all of this is incorrect. Archer says that the surveys involving self-reported data are not better than nothing, uh, but rather they're worse than nothing because they give us the illusion of knowledge. Furthermore, he said, it's impossible to quantify the level of under-reporting in order to make the data useful. Instead, he says, there's under-reporting and over-reporting in every single category and no discernible pattern. He said the best you can hope to get from something like this is an interesting uh, insight into people's perceptions about what they eat. So why do we continue to use the data? Well, Archer says institutional inertia is the cause. He says researchers who've been using this for years and have um, relied upon it to make pronouncements about what they think Americans should eat, and what our deficiencies are, 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 are not going to stop using it. Now, of course, the USDA, because it um, is responsible for this, defends NHANES data. David Clurfeld, PhD, who is the national program leader for the human nutrition for human nutrition for the USDA, says that Archer is wrong. And I love this quote. He says, concluding that memory can't be used for assessing dietary intake is analogous to recommending that physicians no longer take a health history from their patients. Now, it's hard to know where to start when you to address a ridiculous comment like this, but I'm going to assume that we all understand that it is easier to remember that you had a heart attack in 2005 than it may be to remember exactly how much sugar you consumed yesterday. As for Clorfeld, I have a few things to say about him. He became a little bit famous due to his defense of the USDA's use of experts paid by industry for determining dietary needs. He made all those statements and forks over knives. And I guess as wrong as I think he is, I gotta give the guy credit for being a staunch supporter of his employer no matter what the evidence says. As for what consumers and healthcare providers should do with this information, it means that a great number of the studies that are cited all the time about what people are eating and that sort of thing are self-reported data and they should be ignored. And this significantly reduces the number of studies from which good conclusions can be drawn and, and actual recommendations can be made. So anyway, uh, knowing this, uh, I've, I've known about this for some time. It's not the first time I've talked about the limitations of self-reported data. These are better studies than uh, more accurate and recent studies that, uh, than others that I've cited, but um, I take any self-reported data with a, with a grain of salt, uh, and I think all of you should too. All right, that's all for today and all for the week. As usual, pass this on to anybody who you think would enjoy watching it, and I will be back to you next week with more news.